How's it world? We've been traveling all over our country, South Africa. And one of the things we're often asked is, what do you eat while traveling? Today, I will share with you one of my favorite recipes, bread dough. Most people are intimidated by the thought of baking their own bread, but nothing can be simpler. The recipe is very forgiving and you don't need to be exact with all of the quantities. If you can count to six, you can bake your own bread. And so much more than just a loaf of bread. With this dough, you can make pizza, cinnamon rolls, donuts, pita breads, buns, and so on. For this video, I will be measuring the ingredients. But normally, when we make bread, we just guesstimate the amounts and throw it together. Each bread, no matter how you measure, comes out unique and always better than before. Only six ingredients to remember, so let's start. First, we'll add a quarter of a cup of sugar. That's about four tablespoons. You can use any type of sugar, brown, white, etc. Also, you can add much less, or if you're making a dessert bread, much more as well. Next, a packet of instant yeast. These come in 10 gram packets, or 2 teaspoons. Yes, it's easier to cut open with scissors. I found that warm water about the same temperature as a nice bath gives the yeast a great start. Cold water is also fine, but it just takes a little longer for the yeast to activate. But it must not be boiling hot, that will kill off the yeast. Now give it a good stir to break up some of the clumps of dry yeast. This next step is optional. I like to leave the yeast for 5 to 10 minutes to really foam up. I feel maybe it makes the final dough a bit more airy, but also gives me some confidence that the yeast is good to go and has not gone bad. After about 10 minutes the solution is nice and foamy. This is what I like to see. I give the yeast a good stir and now it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. I add about a third of a cup of vegetable oil. Again, more oil works well, so does less. Even none is also fine. This will just change the texture of your final bread. Now it's time for the main ingredient, 4 cups of normal cake flour. You can substitute with any other flour and also mix different grains. But for most recipes, we just stick to plain old wheat cake flour. Lastly, I prefer to do this at the end, 2 teaspoons of salt. I like to sprinkle it all over the flour and does not create any salty clumps. With any mixing spoon or even just a normal tablespoon, like me, start mixing the wet and dry ingredients. The goal here is to get all the dry flour in contact with the moisture. 
It does not need to be completely mixed, but you don't want any pockets of dry flour sitting at the bottom of the bowl. So I just like stirring around in circles until I don't see any dry flour anymore. Now, don't be afraid. What you've been training for since preschool, it's time to get your hands into the dough. Please wash them before this step, but make sure they are dry. You can knead your bread with your hands for as long as you want. Even just a couple of pushes is enough to get the whole mixture in a bowl. But I won't blame you if you just want to keep at it for much longer. At this point, you will feel on your dough whether it's too dry or too wet. Add small amounts of either flour or water to get a nice pliable ball of dough. When you're happy with your dough, you can cover it up with a clean tea towel. This is the resting and proofing phase, and this determines the quality of your final dough. The more time you give the dough to proof, the nicer your dough will become. After about an hour, our dough has doubled in size. I like to push it down and give it another proofing period. On hot days, the dough tends to grow much better than on cold winter days. After another while, we were ready to bake our bread. For a normal bread, take this dough, pop it in the oven for 25 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. But today, we want to make one of our favorite treats, rolled up bacon and cheese pot bread. To start, we add a bit of olive oil to a cast iron pan. A roughly chopped onion and add some heat. Get the onions sizzling hot while stirring, getting the olive oil all over those onions. Add some chopped green peppers and stir it in. Now, the most irresistible part. Bacon. Cut in strips. Listen to that sizzle. I hope you're smelling this. Add some tomato paste to give it a bit of color and stir.
mix the herbs to add some flavor. And our filling is ready. To bake our bread, first I'll oil a big cast iron pot with some olive oil. On a flat surface, dust the flour and start to flatten half of our dough. Using a rolling pin, we want to get a thin rectangular piece of dough, not too thin though. It's time to add half of our filling on top of the dough, spreading it evenly. Everyone wants some bacon. Next come a generous amount of cheese, the more the better. We add some cheddar on hand, but any cheese will do. Roll it up like a scroll. Mind any bits trying to escape from the ends. Take your favorite knife and cut little sausage bits, about 3 cm wide. Watch out for your fingers, this is a big knife. Place each of the bread, bacon and cheese wheels in the pot. Do the same with the second half of our dough.
off to the oven with you. 25 minutes at 200 degrees Celsius. Sure, and there we go. One of our favorite dishes, lovingly called snail pie. But don't worry, no snails were harmed. Time to dish up and enjoy.